Hi there, this is Robin Norgren, and I'm your host for Deeply Rooted. Here's a quote from Carol Franco. I'm learning to be quiet with myself. The view is clearer through the stillness. As she took the time to reflect on her, on the way her life was coming together, she just knew it is well. It is not always easy to be still, waiting for the answers that only come from the quiet, letting our hearts and our minds settle, not making a decision too quickly, not giving the immediate answer. Think about a decision that you made where you reaped valuable benefits from taking that time to let the decision marinate a bit. So um, this ad is sponsored by Anchor. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Here's something you could try today. And I found it in a book called The Art of Noticing by Rob Walker. And what he's done is he he has put together 131 ways to spark creativity, find inspiration, and discover joy in the everyday. Spot something new every day. A heightened observational mindset takes over when we're tourists. In a new place, we pay attention to everything, it seems. Ecologist Liam Hennigan has given this heightened and delighted attention to the ordinary, which manifests in something new to a place, a name. The name is Alacaptaplixis, combining the Greek alo, meaning other, and cataplectico, meaning wonder. But we spend most of our time in familiar places that have lost their inherent novelty. We take these surroundings for granted and we stop paying close attention. A recurring commute becomes profoundly numbing. Psychologists who study perception call this phenomenon inattentional blindness. One of my students pledged to notice something new every day on the two-block walk she made to and from our classroom studies. You can do the same from a bike, a car, a bus, or a train. No tech tools are required. I'd say we could take this a step further and choose a person in our lives that maybe we've started to mm, think of maybe like just an old shoe. Well, we'd never say that. Or just always there. You know, that reliable one. And really start to take in all the facets of this person. The value of appreciation, I highly believe, brings in more people and more circumstances that we begin to appreciate. And it becomes this exponential sense of well-being that is outside of the material realm and really taps into what is most important.
Here's an excerpt from the book called Spiritual Direction by Henry Nowen, and he talks about the ultimate affirmation. For many years, I have read, reflected on, and taught the gospel words in Luke 3 in the story of Jesus' baptism. But only in my latter years have they taken on a meaning far beyond the boundaries of my own religious tradition. God's words, you are my beloved, reveal the most intimate truth about all human beings, whether they belong to any particular tradition or not. The ultimate spiritual temptation is to doubt this fundamental truth about ourselves and trust in alternative identities. Sometimes we answer the question, who am I, with the response, I am what I do. When I do good things and have a little success in life, I feel good about myself. But when I fail, I start getting depressed. And as I get older and can't do much, all I can say is, look what I did in my life. Look, 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 I did something good. Or we might say, I am what other people say about me. What other people say about you has great power. When people speak well of you, you can walk around quite freely. But when somebody starts saying negative things about you, you might start feeling sad. When someone talks against you, it can cut deep into your heart. Why let what others say about you, good or ill, determine who you are? You might also say, I am what I have. For example, I am a Dutch person with kind parents, a fine education, and good health. But as soon as I lose any of it, if a family member dies, if my health goes, or if I lose my property, then I slip into inner darkness. How much of our energy goes into defining ourselves by deciding, I am what I do? I am what others say about me, or I am what I have? When that's the case, life often follows a repetitive up and down motion. When people speak well about me, and when I do good things, and when I have a lot, I am quite up and excited. But when I start losing, when I suddenly find out that I can't do some task anymore, when I learn that people talk against me, when I lose my friends, then I slip into the pit. What I want to say to you is that this whole zigzag approach is wrong. I am not what I do, and you are not what you do, or what others say about you, or what you possess. You are God's beloved. I hope that you hear these words as spoken to you with all the tenderness and force that love can hold. My only desire is to make these words reverberate in every corner of your being. You are the beloved. The voice that speaks from above and from within the whispers softly or declares loudly, You are the beloved son or daughter, and on you my favorite rests. You are my beloved son or daughter, on you my favor rests. It certainly is not easy to hear that voice in a world filled with voices that shout, you are no good, you are ugly, you are worthless, you are despicable, you are nobody until, unless you can demonstrate the opposite. These negative voices are so loud and so persistent that it is easy to believe them. That's the trap of self-rejection. It is the trap of being a fugitive, hiding from your truest identity.